No, no, no. We've ditched the car on, if you remember. Oh, oh we're on the train. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We're in Manhattan. Gagadang, 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 gagadang. Of course, as every fool knows, there are no cars in Manhattan at all. Um, oh. I thought we were just going to take a taxi. Ah! Like that. What's what's the what's the relevance of screaming to taxis? Is it ever been in a New York taxi? I have, yeah. Yeah, they're usually they're terrifying because oh, they're, right? they're really fast and they're all like this close to each other and so that. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I, the, yeah, only yeah, remember, a, the only thing yeah, I remember, the only thing I remember, the only thing I remember about New York taxis is um, being used to Tokyo taxis, uh, where the drivers kind of keep to themselves. Well, how nosy. <laughs> Do we all taxi drivers are like, hey, what you talking about there? Or just kind of uh, <laughs> chiming in I, with the conversation. I think they, uh, yeah, and I think New York taxis are, are are have a bit of a reputation for being a bit dangerous, and because there's traffic is sort of no one really sticks to their lane, and they kind of just all like pushing through. It's kind of like, uh, like some other countries where they have like you know like India or whatever, where they're all like kind of on top of one another and stuff like that. So right, think, right. Yeah. But anyway, we are in Manhattan uh, yes. for, uh, for the for the second of our uh, Manhattan double bills. Yeah, still here. It, Can't get yes. out. No, and this is uh. Um, got on the wrong train. It just went around in a circle. That's right. Like I, I don't think is there, I don't think there's a there's no New York equivalent of the Yamanote line, right? That just goes round and round. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I, can't. Um, I think I I've heard that the New York subway is not air conditioned though. Apparently so. Uh, so. Is that right? I, I don't remember. I, mean, I, I, I just I just found out that, that out this week, so I don't know if it's true or not. So if you are watching from New York, you can comment below. Yes, let us know. Like and subscribe. Are you okay? Yeah, all that stuff. Smash that like button. All those stuff the other people do um, yeah. who are much more successful than we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, anyway. And, uh, there's a theme. Uh, it's a Larry Cohen in New York City double bill, right? Right. And also, I hadn't thought about it. I suppose it's also um, Larry Cohen tackling religious themes of a sort. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're talking uh, God Told Me To, a.k.a. Demon from 1976, uh, followed up by Q or Q the Winged Serpent from 1982. Um, had you seen either of these two films before, Ron? No. Were you uh, at all, were you uh, clued into, were you a Larry Cohen fan? Were you a Larry Cohen guy or no, Larry Cohen meant either. nothing no. to you? No. Okay, all right. What's he most famous for? I suppose It's Alive, maybe. You it's know, Alive. The okay. baby, um, and uh, The Stuff, I guess, has a, a okay. cult okay. reputation now. Um, there was a documentary, because uh, he died, when did he die? Three years ago, maybe? There was a documentary. 2019. Yeah, there was a documentary about him called King Cohen. Uh, which is quite a good uh, starting point if you're interested in uh, Larry Cohen. So he's uh, sort of like a famous for being like low budget horror filmmaker. Yeah, I think he's famous for like being very like independent and getting getting shit done basically. Right. And um, started off as a writer. I think I, if you do you remember there was that TV series in the sixties, The Invaders. Remember that? It was kind of like a pre V where okay. there were aliens hiding among us and the only way you could tell the difference was they couldn't like they couldn't bend their index finger or, or something. I can't uh, remember like a telltale mm -hmm. sign. It was a bit okay. pre um dark skies as well if you okay. remember that show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's how he first kind of that's how he got his chops was a screen screenwriter. And then he kind of uh graduated to directing his own movies and um I, I think he's one of those guys as well, like if you've ever read interviews of him, he's a very kind of smart, funny guy. So you're kind of predisposed to to like him, you know, like he, he's very much a kind of no bullshit. He's got a he's got a nice uh he's quite witty. Mm. Uh, you know, he's he, he, he does I got I got that know. from his films, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So especially the latter of these two, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah, so um, let's well let's start with 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 God told me two then. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this stars a uh, uh, cop Tony Lo Bianco. I just want to say, too bad that, that this movie didn't get a a sequel because they really could have played up the pun with like the God told me two. Two, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been 
really, W in them. Very yeah. good. They could have had like a like a handwritten W. Yeah, know. yeah, that would be great. So really okay. no shame. Yeah. They do. <laughs> There's actually quite a funny story. Is apparently um so Bernard Herrmann was supposed to do the score for this film. Okay. And uh, the guy who did eventually do it, Frank Cordell, it is a very Herman, Bernard Hermany kind of score, right? Because okay. I, I think Taxi Driver was his last completed mm -hmm. soundtrack, which is a great soundtrack. But but apparently before Frank Cordell, apparently Larry Cohen went to uh, Miklos Rosa and he asked him to do the score, to which Miklos Rosa replied, God told me not to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay. so, uh, yeah, Tony LaBianco is a uh, cop who uh, is kind of slowly piecing things together that there's a whole bunch of um, kind of seemingly unrelated uh, killings, right? Starting with like a sniper on a, on a water tower or something, a very Charles Whitman style who pick, picks people off with a rifle and then um, before killing himself says, God told me to. Mm. Uh, and then there's a few more of these. Right? There's like a there's a, a guy who kills his own family, and uh, someone else who stabs people in the supermarket, and and all the 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 link is they all said, God told me to, right? Mm. And Tony Lubyanko is a kind of a, a Catholic. He's kind of a like somewhat conflicted Catholic, and um, very Catholic. He goes to church every day. Yeah, he's but like he's, just... he's like a secret Catholic. He doesn't tell his girlfriend, does he? Uh, like, right. Uh, yeah. And um, a lot of a lot of Catholic shame there, I think. Yes, yeah, and he, yeah, he's 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 kind of in opposition with his bosses as well, who don't want him to cause any trouble. But um, and they investigate him. There's like a slightly internal affairs kind of scene, right, where they call his girlfriend in, and is how is he at home? Is he all right? Because he's he's also traumatized by this sniper that jumps off the roof in front of him, right? But yeah. he's still investigating, and he leaks some stuff to the papers. And um, eventually, he he is he finds out that there's this kind of shadowy cabal of people who who follow what turns out to be um, Richard Lynch being very shiny in a basement. <laughs> the the long-haired freaky people. <laughs> yeah, and he's also shiny. And um, turns out that he was born of cesarean birth to a virgin mother so you see where these parallels are going here and and he also kind of might be a it's hinted that he was a hermaphrodite as well he mm. was neither one sex nor the other but and, it, not just a hermaphrodite because the doctors seemed even really confused by it and, and i mean doctors are at least you know they're, they're at least knowledgeable they they know of hermaphrodite you know hermaphrodites they, they he seemed like this i've never seen anything like that right. before like right yeah so it was even even stranger or less more more than hermaphrodite I yeah think so i was thinking actually a very progressive doctor um i was thinking he'd fit in i like the fact that um he was like well i didn't know what it was but they started calling him he so i just went with whatever they identified <laughs> with. Yeah, right. uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> um yes and and, and then uh, tony lebranco kind of starts hang on a minute and he, he's there's something to do with um there's a, a possible UFO abduction in the back of this, and then that leads him to discover that maybe his own mother, uh, played by Sylvia Sidney, maybe also had some similar experience back in the day via some stock footage of an UFO from Space 1999. And um, yeah, so spoilers, I guess. I, I mean, it's never totally laid out, but I suppose the idea is that maybe he and Richard Lynch are both born of something out of this world, right? So right, that they're aliens and that possibly, uh, I, I don't know, it's it's not, again, not explicitly said that maybe Jesus himself was actually just an alien right. of the same and that, right. that, and that they're, they're, that the reason that he's, you know, become this religious figure and why they uh, they're in kind of in the same boat is because they was born of a virgin birth, but it's not because they were the son of God, but because they were aliens. Right. So, right. right. Yeah. Um, I suppose there's another there's a similar to I can't remember who was talking about it, but um, there's like a famous reading of you could read like the origin of Superman as well. Right. Right? Right. Sort of sudden 
amazing guy with powers born well yeah lowly oh, yeah, de- definitely superman is a, is a is a christ story for sure right yeah. right but right. he saves, saves everybody right so i mean and there's a few i mean there's a, it's interesting as well though it's it's not t- even though this is we'll get to this it's a more serious film than its companion piece in this in this podcast in this video but um it's interesting that they don't he larry Cohen it, it's, he's not totally going for it like I mean, there's a lot of digs at people like Eric von Danik and, and ancient astronauts and, mm. and 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 stuff like that conspiracy. There's like a there's a scene of the mother of the first guy, the sniper, when he jumps off the roof and they're investigate uh, they're um, interviewing his mother, and mm. she says something along the lines of, "Well, people say that it couldn't." She doesn't say specifically say what it was, but people say that it was impossible. The official story. So there's already like a jfk style conspiracy yeah. brewing right and, right, and right. So, there's, so, so there's all these little digs at, so it's not taking it too seriously i guess and i suppose there's always the the possibility that it's all in tony lobianco's head and he's just another psychopath right? right yeah um so yeah so there's a lot of kind of stuff going on um what, what did you make of uh, god told me to run um I think that there's the common thread, I think, between these two movies mm. are that uh, there's, there's, I mean, I mean, they're both kind of, I guess, ostensibly horror kind of movies. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's probably more of a sci-fi, really, I guess, whatever. But, but I think uh, the thing that ties them both together, that they're both totally batshit crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the, and well, no, no. It's just that I totally, not, neither, none of these movies went where I thought they were going to go, right? It's like, it's right. really, I mean, it really starts, and you think it's just going to be sort of this police procedural, with like you know, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with this thing, and you know, maybe a, a, a you know, vague religious theme, especially with the title "God Told Me To." There may be some religious. Certainly, didn't expect there to be aliens and blowing people and, uh, and people with, with vaginas on their on their on their ribs and stuff, right? So, it's, right. yeah, it's it it was definitely shocking how like oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's what this movie is. Oh, okay, mm. it, it's it's it was something the same for that it was quite surprising. <laughs> I didn't right. expect it, which is a good thing, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't expect it. Yeah. So. Um. Also, didn't expect Tony... Andy Kaufman no. didn't expect Andy Kaufman, Kaufman yeah, in his I first think. movie role. Yeah. Yeah. Playing a, a policeman who shoots uh, other people, right? So who, yeah, who apparently, from what I understand, as you would expect, totally took advantage of the situation, right? Mm. And because um yeah they shot in the real St Patrick's Day parade mm-hmm. without, without permits um, no permission yeah because it's Larry Cohen and yeah apparently Andy Kaufman really took advantage of you know having a police for uniform and a gun and just reveled in just annoying the fuck out of people <laughs> at the St Patrick's Day parade which right, you can right. imagine Andy Kaufman would have done right right right, uh, right. yeah yeah so. it's it's a very ambitious film isn't it I would say it's a yeah. It, it, it's 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 obviously ambitious beyond its means i mean mm, yeah uh, yeah i definitely think that uh it suffered a little bit just from the production values i think that right. uh, i think that uh with a, a a bigger budget it definitely could have been something something um notable i think right so i think i mean i've never even heard of this movie but uh i i it was interesting enough that i thought it, it at least deserved some notoriety more than i thought it than i think it does um mm. But uh, uh, yeah, I think I think it just suffered from its kind of low budget kind of idea. But uh, yeah, I thought it was quite interesting. I thought Tony Lo, what's his name? Tony Lo Bianco. Tony Lo Bianco, I would pronounce Lo, it. Lo Bianco, yeah, I think I think he did a pretty good job as that kind of the the confused detective hmm. and uh, putting the pieces together. I thought, uh, yeah, I thought it, it hit all the right moments, and I think it uh, it you know moved along. Quite quickly, it wasn't over long or so that. So it's yeah. I mean, know, Larry anyway. Cohen's good at that, just keeping mm. things moving, right? right. Moving uh, on, yeah, yeah. I think this one more so than the second one. I think the other one was a little bit. I think it it was a bit too talky sometimes. The other one, but uh, well, yeah. it's interesting. I, I mean, we'll yeah. get to that. But I the difference, the ma- major difference between the two of these for me, and made me actually prefer the latter to this one. Mm. Um, is just as a viewing experience. I, I think God told me to is actually probably a. You're definitely right. It's a tighter film. Like it's a, mm. it's a more well-oiled piece of machinery. Right. I, I think I enjoyed Q more just because it has the humor. Like right. Yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah definitely yeah i think this one wasn't as uh there was no winks of the audience as much as the second the the second one i think there's no like yeah no. i don't think it, yeah it was not as self uh um self-conscious or not not self-conscious what's the word I'm looking for. it's a it, it wasn't aware it wasn't self-aware as much as this the second one right so, and i think larry um, cohen works well i think the thing with larry cohen is i think he works well with comedy like because I, I think he can't help himself so that's right but, but yeah he can be over and dull like I, if anyone's ever sat through fucking wicked stepmother or full moon high or some of his more full-out comedic films i mean oh, they're like woefully oh. bad, you know um and I, I think there's bits here but it, yeah it's not like like i, I quite like there's a there's a when he's talking to the newspaper guy and he's talking about, you know, the Orson Welles reading War of the World oh, yeah. and anything. I like the fact that he said, you know, you know, it wasn't that convincing. I mean, it really <laughs> wasn't that good. But but it was enough, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, and I get the feeling, obviously, it's difficult. You can't put yourself in that time and place. But instinctively, I kind of think, yeah, he's probably right. It probably wasn't mm. that, con- you know, if you had half a brain, it probably wasn't that convincing. It probably right, wasn't. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so I think it, I think it was. I mean, uh, going back talking about this is not really the relevant, but I, I got the impression that it was more the fact that it was more the medium that confused yes. people about it because they weren't used to. He- it was like a news, right? And so they were most right. more. It wasn't it wasn't you. They weren't used to hearing like a fake news on the radio. Yeah, they thought it, yeah. that's why they thought it was real, right? So, but it's strange that uh, people choose what they. I mean, famously years later, the Ghost Watch thing that was on BBC One. That I mean, the thing that they both have in common. Um, is people believing them, but they both clearly. I mean, I, I think War of the Worlds, if I remember correctly, I mean, War of the Worlds, you know, begins with yeah. an announcer saying, And now Orson Welles and the Mercury Theatre bring yeah. you, you know, yeah. so it was, of course, movie, if you just broke in, like, but of course, if you turned in like 30 seconds late, then you would know, guess, right? so you yeah, and Ghost Watch was the same, it was, yeah. you know, in the listings, it was branded as uh, whatever yeah. it was, the screen yeah. one yeah. drama or something. Well, oh, what's the ghost one? I don't know that one. Ghost Watch was uh, a, a you know a fake live broadcast that they did in the early nineties on the BBC where they went to like a supposedly haunted um, uh, uh, a suburban house along the same lines as the Enfield haunting in Conjuring Two, oh, okay, like that kind of thing. Right, it, right. So it was a setup as if it was you know a bit of late night Saturday fun like oh let's go to the haunted you know and then. Uh, they did all these things like they had like subliminal kind of things in the background of this character called Pipes who was supposed to haunt the place, okay. and um, and it, it it was just a, it was a it was a really good example of mass hysteria and mm. people claiming like phoning complaining phoning the BBC and saying like you know my house is now haunted after I watched Ghost Watch and, <laughs> and my husband shit his pants so you have to reimburse us for it was a it was a fascinating little. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, we might talk about Ghost Watch one day because it's quite an interesting bit of nostalgia mm. uh, for me as well. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, go, yeah, it it it's definitely more ambitious than it could. But it's it's I, I I think I enjoyed it a little bit less this time just because I expected mm. more from it because I was very yeah I, yeah. I think I think it probably doesn't hold up if you know what's what's coming as much. Maybe not. Yeah, no, yeah. I was more kind of like oh, like I was more. It's more the shock that it's. Takes such a such a right turn, left turn, you know, in the middle of it. So right, guess, right, right. Um, a right or a left turn, I guess. Doesn't matter. It's a turn. <laughs> and it's a turn. Yeah, goes somewhere um, else. Yeah, but it. Yeah, but I, it's it's also quite a. Uh, I mean, it's still. I think it still holds up in terms of like. Um, it's a good example to, up and coming independent filmmakers as well, right? Like. Yeah. You know, you 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 can kind of do, you know you don't necessarily you know you have to cut corners here and there maybe and maybe it looks a bit roughshod but you know you can you have, have an interesting enough concept yeah yeah, yeah. Make, uh, make yourself stand out a bit you know so that's, yeah yeah so I, I that's why I was surprised I hadn't heard of this movie before I thought that at the very least it would be famous for being uh, like quite a different you know that that kind of movie right so but uh, mm. uh, yeah yeah it wasn't yeah. Uh, less famous than I expected it to be so. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. Even among like fans, it's not necessarily as famous as the next film we're going to talk about, uh, Q or Q the Winged Serpent. Uh, are we done with God Told You To? Sure. Yeah. Um, God told me to move on to the next one. 
okay, then I, I'll, I'll, uh, if God told you to, then we should probably do it, right? Because he's, right, yeah. he's a pretty right. big cheese. Right, yeah. He's, um, yeah, Cue the Wingers in nineteen two again, directed and produced, and produced by Larry Cohen, again, using his, you know, gorilla, just get out there and do it. And I think in the t in in terms of this film, get arrested in the process. As well. I think the police. Oh, he got arrested this time. I don't think got arrested, but I think the police did get it because I, towards the end of the film, the whole stuff when they, I think they were actually hanging off. I'm not sure if it was the Chrysler building or another building, but they were they did dress stunt men up as policemen and they had them hanging off, um, like uh, window cleaning cars and like. Oh, really? okay, really. Shooting like thick shooting automatic him, yeah, yeah. weapons, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can imagine. You're not getting away with that now in New York City, right? No way, no. <laughs> but at the time, uh, yeah. I mean, if you had the if you had the gumption, then yeah, I guess just, yeah. So yeah, so uh, this one, uh, the cue of the title is uh, Kuzakotl. Uh, I think it's I think is Kuzakotl is how they pronounce it. I think. Uh, who is a like Kuzakotl? Aztec flying serpent, uh, god monster thing. Thing, yeah. There is a, a old film from 1946 about called Flying Serpent, which I think is the only other quasi corporal film that I know of. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. oh Long Island. Um, <laughs> Long Island. And this is a quarrel in Long Island. And this, uh, there's the sequel. <laughs> and this uh, thing's going around picking. Biting off people's heads and 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 pulling them up off, you know, roofs and um, and uh, it's a, a stop motion thing by David Allen, which is actually all the effects in this film are quite good. The stop motion effects are quite good. And the, yeah, for for the seventies, uh, it, it was yeah, not bad. Yeah, so yeah definitely is like rubber monster. All effects are pretty good. I I, I really like the um, when the people were falling off of the the building and they go ah and they get like smaller and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, does, it does look real, but it looks it has like a really cool effect to it, though. Yes, yeah. yeah. I don't know how he did that, but it was. I, I think sometimes that's the key, isn't it? Is is like, it's not necessarily realism. It's if it has, like you said, an, an effect. It, an if effect, it looks yeah, yeah. Memorable it's a, a reaction, yeah. So. Yeah, I much prefer that to, you know, modern day CGI, for example, because um, mm -hmm. it just it's got it's it's got a bit more character. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so he's going around and, um, and you know, the cops, specifically David Carradine, um, who is, um, <laughs> yeah, David Carradine is, is, seems to be taking this very seriously. I, 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 sorry, before we go on, I feel like we've talked about this before. Are you sure it's Carradine and not Carradine? I thought it was, thought it was I'm Carradine. I'm not sure at all. Some, okay, people, say I was some people say the other, yeah. So, potato, potato. Exactly. Okay, I don't, so. it's James. Definitely not David Potato Potato. It's either Caradine or Caradine. Okay, I thought it was David Potato Potato Caradine Caradine. Let's call the whole thing. Like that was like the the height, the air quotes uh, middle name. Right. Anyway, yeah. be quiet, Ron. Um. So, <laughs> yeah, David Caradine is very kind of. I mean, I don't know. He's, uh, there's a few scenes where he seems slightly more clued into the joke. Like, yeah, I, I, some I, scenes I, where he's like really yes. kind of. Bringing yes, I think he's. I think he's really thinks he's in a different movie than he is. Yeah, he does seem a little confused, <laughs> and I, I don't blame him because, yeah. again, I, well, actually, I know this for a fact that he did basically turn up on without having read the script. Oh, ah, yeah, right. Did yeah. his first scene where he didn't know what the context was. So I, apparently, it's the scene where he walks into the bar, and Michael Moriarty is playing scat piano, um, which is kind yeah. of a weird scene anyway. And just, yeah, just go yeah. in there, and, and that guy will ask you. What happened to the head? And you just say, oh, it'll turn up. And, and apparently David Carradine vomited after the end of the scene as well, right? Because he was just so bewildered and confused. That's what he'd never worked like that apparently before. Oh. Like on, on that low budget, like, let's go. Oh, so it was all improvised. He had never yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. scene. He just said, go in there, yeah. say that. And then afterwards he got to read the script. But I, I guess on a low budget film like this, Larry Cohen's just gonna get you in just in time for your first scene, right? And, right, right. Yeah. And you're only gonna do the minimum. A mountain minimum piece, front. and then you can yeah. Go before before everyone realizes you're there, you got to be out to the next place, right? So yeah, but I because I guess if you're paying for David Carradine, you know you're paying, you know you're paying for something, a name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a name, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So he's kind of trying to convince 
his partner, as played by uh, Richard Roundtree, um, and um, yeah, his superiors. That he's slowly going around him, interviewing people who are telling him about you know Aztec stuff and blah 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 blah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Michael Moriarty, um, speaking of performances, um, <laughs> uh, who is like an ex junkie, ex con wheelman for the mob uh, who through this convoluted kind of diamond robbery gone wrong plot finds out that Quasi Quartal has his nest in the dome of the Chrysler building, right? Right, yeah. Um, and thus tries to leverage this against the city. Like, it's his chance to be a big man, right? Yeah, and also to, like, make money, right? So it'd be yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's and like he, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a big con he's trying to pull, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, and he's I I I mean he's the key to this film. I think like yeah yeah yeah. I mean if you don't get on with Nick Moriarty, you're not going to enjoy this film. <laughs> right? I, 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 before we go on a little bit more, uh, I'm I'm not too familiar with Michael Moriarty as a performer. Is he always like that, or just in this movie? Uh, I mean, he can be like that. I mean, he okay. can also be somewhat more disciplined. I mean, he was in that. Um, he was in that. Um, I've n never seen it actually, but he was in that famous miniseries Holocaust about the Holocaust, right? Where he played okay. Nazi. Is that where the Holocaust? Do we Holocaust, uh, yeah. Holocaust is about wouldn't, the Holocaust? You wouldn't believe. Oh, it, I wouldn't have guessed that. That's that's no, a bit of a. I thought it was about how right. they invented potato salad. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, uh, what a, a clever title. Potatoes. Okay. But I'm guessing he doesn't do this in that because that would be oh. strange, right? <laughs> but I don't know. I've never well, seen it's strange here too. But I mean, yeah, no, no. I've seen him in a whole bunch of things. Sometimes he's like this. Sometimes he's. A... But he's he's very. Um... I mean, he's a. I mean, I'll... he's a. Very... He. What's the word? I don't know. He's he engages with the material. I'll he give he that. swings for the fences. Yeah, he makes choices. Yeah, as as we say in the actor world, he he's he he he's an actor who makes choices and he commits to it. He commits to his choices, yeah. He's, he oh, reminds well, me a little bit know. of a... I, I would say he makes choices, and then five minutes later, might make another choice. Like, choice. <laughs> But he commits to that choice. Every time yes. he makes a choice, he commits to yeah. it. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of Nicolas Cage, in that, in that he just sort of like... You're not really sure what he's doing, but it's fun to watch, though. <laughs> I think he was he was on Law & Order for a while. I think. Yes, for like four years. Yeah, he was like... Yeah. Uh, Until he yeah, got looks replaced like his... by his... Uh, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, Chris Knopf? No, the guy who's in Serial Mom. The guy uh, the, who plays Captain Turner's husband. Uh, 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 Sam something? Oh, Jerry Orbach? No. The one whose daughter is now a famous actor. What Water? Water? Sam Water? Oh, Sam Waterston. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's, his, who's his daughter? Uh, something else, Waterston. Kathy or something? She's okay. quite okay. famous now. Um, Obviously, oh, okay. not okay. that famous because he was, right, yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah, no. So, um, yeah, Michael Moriarty. Uh, what can we say? Um, I mean, I, I, I dig him. I dig him. Um, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a, a likable jerk, right? Like, yeah, yeah. He's such an asshole in a way, but you can't help but kind of like him. I think. Well, I think that's kind of the idea of that is that he's supposed to be. This sort of like, you know, sleazy, you know, con man, but he's so likable that you can't help but like him, kind of thing. But right, yeah, yeah. and but he, I, I'm surprised he, he's, 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 he must be really full from you know chewing up the scenery. I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even his girlfriend in it, um, can't yeah, she goes for the fences too. She tries yeah. to match him a few times. Yeah, 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 she likes him, even though it's intimated that um, he's. I mean, it sours the character slightly bit, but you don't yeah. see it. So, but it is intimated that there's been domestic physical abuse as well. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. He says yeah. a few things. Of, yeah, oh, you, you, you smack, smack me around, around again. I, yeah, yeah. I promise you'll never smack me in the round again, and ever so. And yeah, I, I think it's because it's coming from Michael Moriarty. It's a slight because he's such a weasley looking dude that <laughs> he's not a physically intimidating man. No. Well, right? he's well. Apparently, well, according to his IMDb page, as one of Hollywood's Tallest actors he standing at six three, so <laughs> he will always be noticed. So, we, so the we know how some short people um, have a big personality. 
Right, right. Michael Moriarty almost seems like the inverse, right? He's tall, but he's good at being small and weasley and like Steve Buscemi, like. I think. But, but with the big personality, I guess, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, but, say, so. yeah. I, but you know what I mean. He he, he doesn't yeah. physically intimidate things somehow. Yeah, he doesn't doesn't seem like a like he's an aggressively or masculine guy, right? Right, so. right. Um, yeah, but he's a he's a he's a hoot in this film for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, between him and the and and the um, uh, stop motion uh, like pterodactyl or whatever it's supposed to it's supposed right. to be. It, it's it, it's quite it's quite fun. It's just like a it's like a good old fashioned like. You know, monster movie, I guess, right? So it's yeah, with with like some yeah, with some Larry Cohen quips and and, right. and uh, right. screwball comedy kind. Of. And right. yeah. I think it's one of those films. I think like the longer you watch it, I think you kind of settle into it and you enjoy it more. Like I think for a while you're not you're slightly wrong footed by it because you're like this is all over the place, right? This is yeah, yeah. Well, it is all over the place, and that's why I was saying it was slightly a little bit started to get a little bit too talky for me because. I think because they, you know, rightfully so, didn't show the monster that much, right? right? Which makes it, you know, so, and I probably, because they couldn't probably just didn't have the money to show it anymore. But then they were, there was a lot of, felt like there was a lot of filler in this movie, a little bit more filler than there. So I just, yes. I was just like, okay, well, let's just get back to the, and there was just a lot of like talking and then this person and then talking and then more Michael Murray, you know, blah, 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 stuff like that. And then going, I mean, hey, he's still going off. And I was like, okay, well, let's just get back to the monster, right? So, but it was, so it was, it was, slightly frustrating just that it was it was a little bit it just, again as i said it felt, felt yeah. fillery a little bit so but, but imagine if you didn't have someone like michael moriarty right, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it would be worth michael moriarty, I, i'm glad he's he was there because yeah. it was yeah made it, uh, but i think that some of the scenes could have been trimmed a little bit or a little bit uh or or made it a little bit more it could have been tighter i think as you said it wasn't as tight as the other one so. yeah no i i think uh in a way the michael moriarty's scat piano playing is a good metaphor for the yeah i mean i love that that's again i don't know if it's improvised and i'm guessing it was just that just that great that first scene where they first meet and david Carradine goes oh it sounds okay to me and michael Moriarty's like oh the fuck do you know and yeah, that yeah. smiles as well on his way and it's like yeah. And really like, antagonistic, well, but that? but kind of smiley and chirpy and cheerful as well. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, yeah, what the fuck do I know? Antagonistic, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, it was good fun though. It was, it was, it was fun. Yeah, and it doesn't outstay its welcome because it is like whatever it was, like ninety minutes. No, actually, no. It's it, yeah, it's a longer than that, isn't it? It's it's it. It probably is about ten minutes too long. You're quite right. I think yeah. it's mm. closer to the hundred forty minute yeah. mark or something yeah. rather right. than. Um, and it should probably should have been a tight ninety minutes. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and you and there's certain scenes where it there's like a scene um, in the police station where this is a good example actually where Richard Roundtree's taken Michael Moriarty to interrogate him, and then he gets sidelined and he has to go and talk to David Carradine and the police captain, and Michael Moriarty's like like year wigging, and that whole scene is they clearly don't know what to do with it right because like. All right, let's take this outside. And the camera tracks outside and they talk there for a little bit. Ah, and then they go back inside and the camera and, and then it goes out. And it's like, you're either doing too much or not enough. <laughs> yeah, there, there isn't a film in the rehearsal, right? They're just picking it up as they go, right? So Right, yeah. yeah. So that kind of seemed a bit, like, that was a good example of, um, yeah, of, of the bagginess of it. But but then again, I, I, mean, I suppose it, it seems to me that seems to be part of, like, it's the way he works. I, I think I'd rather that this film existed and it existed in this form than it yes. didn't exist. Right, 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 right. right. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it's it's there's a it's a lot funnier than God told me to. I think. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, yeah. As I said, that, that's what it's got, definitely got going for it. That it's uh, it's got more of its sort of like winks at the audience and it kind of it's as I said, self a little more self aware that yeah yes. we know we're just making like a kind of like a like you know a weird movie but hey just uh come along with us for the ride you know yeah so. yeah and, and it's even got a nice line in like there's a set there's that certain line of a, a very new york strain of humor where they wisecrack and they know it's they know it's a corny wisecrack yeah, 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 i like, yeah. can't it's like when they find the big egg and they're like okay fry up a pound load of bacon you know that kind of thing is like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. but you still yeah, well, fair like, enough. I the, the like dad it. jokes. You're like, yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of dad jokes. Like, yeah. yeah. 
I, I think they're both quite, especially, especially Q. Q is a good New York movie, I think. Mm, isn't it? Right, 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 yeah. yeah. It's quintessential New York of this era. New York. Right? Not a not Long <laughs> Island, but particularly. Long Island. Yeah. New York. So, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was good. Yeah, fun. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fun one. I've always enjoyed but, yeah, Q. that it was. I was going to call it that shit crazy because it's more like winged serpent shit crazy. There we go. Yeah. And yeah, I see what you did. Well done. You're proud of yourself, I can tell. Um, and as well, I mean, I mean, the likelihood of winged serpent uh, uh, feces being more or less crazy than the shit of a bat. Uh, right. You know, why yeah. not? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Although you must imagine that. Man, there must be like, can you imagine like if there really was a winged serpent above New York? Imagine the shit that it must drop on people. That would have been a good scene, just having like a big pile of big turds shit just on yeah, dropping a turd on someone's head, right? A stop motion Probably. turd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I mean, it's kind of crying out. I mean, it even ends on a, you know, it could there could easily be a sequel, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would. It, it is fifty one years later because it's not a. Because it's not a stone classic, it's just kind of a fun film with fun ideas. Yeah. This is the kind of film you should either should remake, remake or do a sequel to, right? I, Basically, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, it's not like something, oh, no, you ruined Q because, well, no, I mean, because Q is kind of slightly yeah. damaged goods anyway, right? So it's fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Q, uh, yeah, I mean, I know Nicholas Winding Refn's doing Maniac Cop um, yeah. written on from a Larry Cohen script. So, yeah, maybe yeah. Q after that. I mean, yeah, see. yeah, right, right to Nicholas. Wanting reference said that should be next on your list. I will. I'll do that as soon as we finish. Um, <laughs> right. I think that's this. Done, is it, Ron? Yeah, good enough. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Let's get, uh, so, are we up, staying uh, in Manhattan, or are we finally moving on? No, no. We've got a, a one more bonus track, uh, one film, one more Manhattan film in this, and then we're off to somewhere else. I have to consult my map, but somewhere else. We're still, we're still in New York, though. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Until right. next time, then. Off we go. Get out of the way, you New York hippie who's on the train. You New York hippie with the glowing hippie. A what? Glow, the glowing hippie is the. Oh, the glow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Glowing, get out of the way, you. You glowing. Glowing hippie. Glowing hippie. Covered in winged serpent feces. Glow. Glow. Bye. Bye. Then you leave me and go away So that I be living by night, not by day